In this video, we'll be looking at the use of a perpetual inventory system and LIFO and FIFO. Under a perpetual inventory system, our business uh, needs to record every change in inventory as it happens during the period. That means every time we make a sale, we have to stop and determine which units were sold and what the cost of the goods sold was. And then we then record it by debiting cost of goods sold and crediting the inventory account. When we make purchases of inventory during the period, we debit the inventory account and credit cash. If we return to the example that we looked at in the last video, where we used a periodic inventory system, we recall that there were 100 units that cost $5 each in our beginning inventory, and then we made a purchase of another 200 units at 6, and then a purchase of 300 at 7. So we wound up with 600 units total uh, available for sale with a cost of $3,800 overall. If we're using a perpetual inventory system and FIFO, then we could set up a table like this to keep track of the sales and the purchases and our inventory balance. And on January 1st, we might note the fact that we had 100 units available at $5 each, a total of $500, and that represented the balance in our inventory account at that time. And then on January 10th, we bought another 200 units at $6 each, so our inventory was composed of a base layer, the beginning inventory, of 100 units of $5, and then another unit, another layer rather, that we just added of 200 units at $6. When we make a sale on January 15th, of 150 units, then we can record the 150 unit sale here and determine the cost of the units and see what the total cost of goods sold was and just fill it in in our table. So if we're using FIFO, we would look at the units that are available at this time and we would say, well, if we sold 150 units, then under FIFO, we would assume that the 100 units that cost $5 were sold along with another 50 units that cost 6 so we can note here in our table that the cost of the goods sold represented 100 units at $5 along with 50 units at 6 a total of $800 cost of goods sold. This would be our debit to cost of goods sold and credit to the inventory account. What's left in inventory now are 150 units of the 200 that we did have that had a cost of $6 each. So the ending inventory now is 150 units at $6, a total balance of 900. On January 20th, when we make another purchase, this time 300 units at $7, then we're adding a layer to the inventory. And now our inventory is composed of the 150 units at a cost of $6 each and 300 units at 7 a total balance in inventory then of $3,000. On January 25th, we need to record the sale of another 150 units. So the question would be, which 150 units were sold? And under FIFO, the first ones in, of all those that are left in our inventory, are these units that cost $6 each. So we would determine that cost of goods sold on January 25th was 150 units at $6 each, a total of 900. What's left in our inventory then after this sale is just the 300 units that had a cost of $7. Overall, by the end of the month then, we've recorded the following. The sale of 300 units at a total cost of $1,700. Uh, note this is the same cost of goods sold figure that we got previously when we uh, did this as a periodic inventory problem. The ending inventory is composed of 300 units that have a cost of $2,100, and again, this is the same result that we got before. We've divided up the $3,800 then between cost of goods sold and ending inventory, just as we did previously, and we even got the same amounts that we got previously. But we're not done. Let's do this again using a LIFO flow assumption. Uh, we would again start the period with 100 units at $5 each and then make a purchase on January 10th of 200 units at $6 each. 
and our inventory will now be composed of two layers with a total cost of $1,700. When we get to January 15th and it's time to record the sale of 150 units, then the question is, which units did I sell? And our answer would be, well, we have two layers in our inventory, and the most recent layer uh, are these $6 units. So the 150 units must have been sold from the last ones in, and that would be the $6 units, and we would record cost of goods sold of 150 units at $6 each, a total of 900. And that means we have the 100 units from the beginning inventory still left, along with 50 units from the $6 layer. A total of $800 then in our inventory currently. On January 20th, we make another purchase, and that's 300 units at $7 each. And when we add the 300 units to our current inventory, the cost of the inventory goes up to 2,900. The inventory is now composed of three layers. On January 25th, we make another sale of 150 units. And then the question would be, which units did we sell? Under LIFO, last in, first out, the last units in were the $7 units. So we would assume the sale of 150 units at $7 each, total cost of $10.50. Now what's left in the inventory after all this is 100 units at $5 each, 50 units at $6 each, and 150 of the $7 units. So we have 300 units left in the ending inventory, and the total cost of the inventory is $1,850. Let's slide this down just a little bit further, and we'll summarize, just as we did above. And now we could say that of the 600 units that we're dealing with here in the month of January, the 300 sold had a cost of $1,950, and this represents cost of goods sold for the month. And the ending inventory units, 300 of them, have a total cost of $1,850. Now if you compare these results with what we got before in the previous video when we used a periodic system, then you'll notice that our cost of goods sold and ending inventory balances are different. The reason they're different is because under LIFO, when we stop during the period to record a sale, we can only base our determination of cost of goods sold on the units that are currently in the inventory. Under a periodic system, at the end of the period, all the layers are in the inventory, the five, the six, and the seven dollar units. But right now, we only have the five and the six dollar units there. So we assume that the 150 units sold all came from the six dollar layer. If we waited until the end of the accounting period and started with the seven dollar units, then we would wind up not even getting back into the $6 units as we accounted for all the sales. So it's all a matter of timing. And because under a perpetual system, we stop during the period to record cost of goods sold, then we're likely to assume the sale of different units than we would assume were sold if we waited until the end of the accounting period to record the sale. Why did FIFO give us the same results? Because if we choose first in, first out, it doesn't matter when we stop to determine the cost of the goods sold. We're always drawing units from the first layer first, and then the next layer, and so on. It won't matter whether we stop during the period and account for sales, or we wait until the end of the period to do it. But under LIFO, it matters. Not all the layers will be in place when we do stop to determine cost of goods sold, and that's likely to result in the assumed sale of different units under a perpetual system with LIFO than we would assume were sold under a periodic system with LIFO.